I mean, that looks great. That's a very small serve though, right? A very small serve and maybe half a banana or a banana there and blueberries. I mean, it's good to see some fruit, hey? Like, good, Swayze. It's good to see some fruit. But I know this... You know, obviously this is not enough fruit, but still good to see. So funny, again, it's just perspective, but like I, I eat a lot of fruit. I have fruit every single day, multiple times a day, unless we run out because she's coming from this position of like, no, you should eat pounds of fruit a day. Well, of course, by comparison, I don't eat nearly enough fruit. <laughs> just do oatmeal and soy milk. I uh, put a little bit of peanut butter powder, not peanut butter powder, peanut powder in there for a little okay. bit of protein. It doesn't really add any flavor because I don't put that much protein like you really don't you don't have to worry you don't have to worry about adding peanut for protein i mean like i put my blood tests up after 14 years being fruit based and you know as far as a swayze is concerned getting hardly any protein and look at me i'm as healthy as can be my blood tests reflect that my fitness reflects that a protein blood test isn't really like a thing that measures much of anything it's like getting a calcium blood test so it's it's not the same as like measuring your your iron your ferritin levels or your hemoglobin or something like that so that's not actually a good thing to reference if you're talking about blood tests but anecdotes like that's like me saying well everyone needs coffee because i need coffee for energy or everyone needs nine hours of sleep because that's how i function the best is getting nine hours of sleep well of course that's ridiculous there are, there are some people not very many but there are some people who only need six hours of sleep and having to get nine would be borderline abuse just because freely's blood results are good and good for her i'm glad you know i hope she's i hope she's really healthy eating her eating her diet that doesn't mean that everyone else is gonna have the same results and it doesn't even mean that she's healthy i guarantee you she has not had a comprehensive assessment done and certainly in terms of bone health um, there's not really a whole lot of blood tests that you can do that are going to tell you that even if her bone health is great it's it's one person and there are lots of counter examples there are far more counter examples of people really struggling for me personally this lifestyle triggered like binge eating habits sure i can eat this entire bag of pasta like i'm gonna do that even if i'm sick and so full i'm gonna still stuff my face because yes who doesn't love to eat because i was under the impression that that was healthy and you're not gonna gain weight from it you'll just be this like ideal perfect happy person the reason that i gained so much weight which now that i look at it it's kind of miraculous that i only gained 30 pounds in a year because I was eating a shit ton of food. This wasn't happy, like, I was not satisfied on Rothville floor because I was eating foods that I don't like. And I was eating quantities that were making me, like, sick. So if you're gonna go by anecdotes, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense to look at her one and the few other people who are still doing this. Chris Kindle, I think is his name. I just found out he is still doing this. The raw advantage seems to be eating the same the same way he you know looks great it makes more sense to maybe look at all those cases instead of the handful of people who have been doing this long term and seem to be doing okay but i you know that's just my opinion but no i don't have a comprehensive blood test done because i'm not gonna spend money on that i don't think it's necessary i'm not one of these people who think you need to get blood work done regularly unless you've been ordered to by your doctor obviously but um to me that just is kind of I don't know, a little obsessive and weird. And I mean, look, if you're eating a super restrictive diet like Freely is and you want to keep doing that, then yeah, it makes sense to regularly go to a doctor and get blood work done. But if you're eating a standard vegan diet and supplementing what you need to supplement, I don't think that really makes sense. And certainly the things I've had checked, like iron and whatnot when I've been pregnant have been totally fine. So, um, and B12 as well. So yeah, I don't, I don't really feel the need to go in and get everything checked at least for now certainly when i'm older i'll have a cholesterol panel i haven't had one of those done in a few years now a lipid panel but uh anyway let's keep going oh hey this is from the woodstock fruit festival tim tim van orden i believe is his name truly one of the best people i met at woodstock he really seemed just like he seemed in his videos which is just very just so nice really wanting to help people just one of the few people i've met who's like oh wow he's really like he is in videos he's just that positive and that nice and just wants to help people and just be around people he's just truly a gem one of the best things i did there we went on this hike this awesome like pretty intense hike that he led and it was so much fun and yeah 
that's that's all I wanted to say. He was just a real a real nice individual. <laughs> we went to Giant Mountain. Oh, okay. So yeah, that was the hike, Giant Mountain. Uh, what was it? Three miles. 3,000 something feet and so it was pretty intense and we fueled ourselves on dates. Mostly yeah, dates, yeah. Mostly dates, some bananas. And yeah, I went on a hike eating fruit. Yeah, I did lots of active stuff. I'm literally holding my arm with my other arm. Like how, does anyone do this? Probably not. So she seems to be very low in strength as well where she can't hold the camera up. And I have to tell you that I was very impressed because <clears throat> I ran up the mountain two days ago and I found it to be exceptionally challenging. We come to an open granite face at maybe a 35 to 40 degree slope and she runs it really easily. So number one, I was much younger. I had not had two kids. Again, getting lots and lots of sleep, not having any sort of responsibilities really at all other than my three cats and my, oh wait, was my dog alive then? Yeah, Bean Dip was still, Bean Dip was still alive. Some of you remember Bean Dip. Oh, just the best, best dog ever. But also the, the phone thing, it's not an issue of strength. It's an issue of stamina. I mean, I'm definitely a lot stronger actually than I was then. I've been lifting weights for far longer than I was then. I was doing Kathy and stuff, but I don't know if I was doing actual like progressive strength training that I like I am now, but that's more of an issue of stamina, like holding out a phone. It's kind of like if you've ever painted doing something over your head and it's like, oh, this is so light and easy. And then after a few minutes, it's like, oh my God. Again, just kind of bringing up all these old things as like a as like a gotcha. It's really sad. Come on, Freely. Like how, how old are you? Aren't you like 40 now? Aren't you too old to be doing something like that? And then using this like, oh no, it's, it's, it's to help you. I'm actually being helpful. Maybe this will be the start of something beautiful of helping Swayze. It's not just me. Most of the videos she does, they're not about me. They're about what other YouTubers and some of them are watching it and you're really making them feel like shit. Like, do you really want to be that person? I choose to believe that you're better than that. And I know you quit doing that for a period of time. And I think you went back to it because you stopped getting views, but now you're no longer getting views. This video has 24,000 views. Like you don't have to do this shit anymore. Just do your off the grid videos, which are like way cooler. In my opinion, I've watched a couple of those, especially like the quiet ones. They're actually kind of cool. They're getting the same kind of views as these. So like, why not just stick to those? Just a thought. I've never heard of this because I'm out here, you know, eating real food. And that just reminds me, I, I did a recent video looking at someone else's what I ate today, another vegan, Derek Simnet, and I was intrigued because he had the Nugo bar. I would be interested to see her response to one of his videos because he eats certainly not like freely at all. He eats lots and lots of whole foods, but lots and lots of protein. He eats protein powder. He eats Nugo bars sometimes. I don't think he drinks a lot of coffee, but certainly he's not eating a fruit-based diet and yet, I would consider him a pretty high energy person. Like he definitely seems like he's the kind of get up and go type of person and has lots of energy. So I would love to see her kind of respond to that and see what she has to say about his his energy levels and his uh, lack of fruit. It just blows me away that she can critique anyone else's diet when she eats like this. Is she for real? I had oatmeal and fruit and peanut butter for breakfast. And soy milk. I mean, I think by most people's standards, that was actually a pretty healthy breakfast, but okay. Okay, so more highly processed, crispy. What are these? It's not even highly processed. Like it's mostly just almond flour and sunflower seed flour and some salt. Just because something is ground up and like cooked and put into a box doesn't mean it's like unhealthy. They do um, fortify some foods with fructose you know, because they know the human frugal lo loves the sweet stuff, right? So they put it in a lot of these foods, but I'm not sure. I have never heard of something being fortified with fructose. That's not how we use the word fortify. <laughs> fructose is added for flavor. It's not, fortify is used for like things that are adding nutrition. So like you fortify almond milk with calcium and B12, right? You fortify cereal with iron. You're not fortifying cereal or crackers with sugar. <laughs> These are really good. Kids like them, especially tiny baby. Tiny baby loves them. So I what? Tiny baby loves those crackers. So, <laughs> so she's feeding her baby these highly processed crackers, but don't feed them too much fruit. 
it just oh it's almost like you know it's just ridiculous. I'd like it's almost like what what were you gonna say what what were you gonna maybe maybe child abuse is that what she's gonna say maybe not I shouldn't assume you can very easily feed kids too much fruit and unfortunately again I have gotten lots of messages from people talking about vegan kids and failure to thrive talking about them in these groups and trying to feed their kids just like you know Ellen Fisher and all these other people do with lots and lots of volume and lots of fruit and vegetables and whatnot and their kids actually getting failure to thrive diagnoses because they're not gaining enough weight on those diets so absolutely you can give your kids too much fruit they have tiny tiny tummies I mean look again a lot of adults I don't know why again this is so obvious to most people but a lot of adults really really struggle to try and get enough calories eating a bunch of fruit there's so much water there's so much volume and for kids it's 10 times worse than that their tummies are so tiny and of course they don't have the knowledge to go oh well you know I need to keep eating though because I'll literally die if I don't keep eating they don't have that so when they're full they're full and they will just stop so yeah it is a concern kids getting too much fruit now for me for my kids it's not because we eat lots of calorically dense stuff my kids eat lots of beans and grains and yes some processed stuff too god forbid <laughs> and dates even they're actually really calorically dense one of the few uh calorically dense fruits so they're able to eat more fresh fruit I don't worry about them like wanting a whole like bowl of fruit or something because they're getting plenty of calories even still when they want fruit like they're not eating I'm trying to think like the most tiny baby who's two now um, every once in a while they'll eat like a whole lot of uh, frozen wild blueberries they love frozen wild blueberries both of them do but particularly tiny baby and they'll probably eat like half a cup or so but that's it they can't physically eat more than that in a sitting so uh yeah even still you know we don't restrict fruit or anything but yeah they're not eating they're not gonna eat pounds of fruit a day it's it's not possible and they would absolutely suffer so yeah please don't tell people kids can't get too much fruit or like promote a fruit-based diet for children that's where it's not funny anymore I had some of the caffeine mints at some point. Whoa, she had some. So she had more than one of these caffeine mints. And remember, they have 40 milligrams of caffeine in each one. Wow. So, okay, so that's a lot of caffeine. It's really not that much. It's like not even three cups. But yeah, also, I said in there that I woke up early because of Tiny Baby. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes if I really don't get enough sleep, like where I'm really dying, like I said I was, yeah, I'll have some extra caffeine on that those days. But yeah, normally I really try to limit myself to two cups. I don't want to get more than that. I don't want to um, like risk, you know, messing up my sleep. I try to have my sef second cup before like 3 p.m. So I have plenty of time um, for it to wear off before I go to bed. It's one of those things with kids. Sometimes, sometimes they decide to get up at three in the morning. Luckily, mine don't do that any anymore. I mean, toddler like never did that. They were like grade A, A plus sleeper, but tiny baby has had some issues. Yeah, not in a really long time, which is why I haven't had, I think I had one of those mints a couple days ago. And then I don't know, I probably have like five a month, something like that. I really don't eat them very often. I try to just have my two cups and have my 20 minute nap sometime, you know, around one or so. Yeah, so I took a couple of the caffeine energy mints. Okay. And I think they made me nauseous. I've been talking about that with the, you know, caffeine. If I have it on an empty stomach now, it seems like it makes me nauseous, coffee. It's just drugs, sister. You know, like it's not meant to go into your stomach. It's not meant to go into your gut. It's just, it's not food. It's a stimulant. I mean, are highly hybridized bananas meant to go into your stomach? The bananas that she's consuming, a lot of the fruit that she's consumed over the years have been chosen and have been cultivated by human beings. These are not things that we, that our ancestors were eating. Not at all. These were not things that we evolved to consume. If you look at wild bananas, they are very different from the bananas that we essentially have created maybe instead of looking at whether or not something is natural or whether or not we're meant to consume something maybe look at the science you know maybe I know it's kind of a dirty word for her but maybe look at the science maybe that's where we should turn to see if something is again overall net positive for us and when it comes to coffee it looks like overall 
it's a net positive, not like a, everyone should be consuming coffee or anything like that, but at worst, it's like a neutral thing to consume. Again, every person is different. Absolutely, there are people who do not benefit from drinking coffee. They feel jittery, whatever. You know, they uh, have severe heartburn, whatever, GERD, something like that. Generally, it looks like coffee is, again, at worst, a neutral beverage. And also the empty stomach thing. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I don't seem to have that anymore. I've been having coffee. Sometimes I have my smoothie first, take a shower and stuff, and then have my coffee. But sometimes I have it in the morning or when I have it in the afternoon, I haven't eaten for a while and I don't have that problem anymore. I don't know, man. Me and food. Yeah. All right. So, you know, look, it's plant-based, of course, because she's, well, she says she's vegan. Um, so <laughs> She's good at that. I have to say, like, respect. She is really good at the passive aggressive and like the, the little digs and stuff. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Freely has said for years that I'm not really vegan. Like not even just like, I don't know, like, no, for sure. I'm not vegan. I'm a, I'm a shell or fake vegan, anti-vegan, one of those types of things. So peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. I mean, it kind of looks like wartime food to me, right? Very dry. Wartime food? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is that an Australian thing? Do y'all not have like peanut butter sandwiches? It's a very common thing to eat for lunch, at least in the US. It's not a wartime food. <laughs> what? Ideally, you would have some vitamin C with it. So orange, strawberry, something like that to help with the absorption of the non-heme iron from the peanut butter and from the bread as well. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, it is very cheap, so sure. Wartime food. <laughs> I mean, then it would be white bread, right? You would not be eating whole wheat bread. You would be eating super, super cheap white bread. Where's the fresh? Where's the vitamin C? Fair. Again, it, it is better to have vitamin C. I try to have vitamin C with, uh, with any sort of iron-rich meal. I mean, this isn't really iron-rich, but it's certainly got some from the, excuse me, from the peanut butter and from the, from the bread. So yeah, Vitamin C would be a good addition. She would have gut issues for sure eating this way. And like, she has to think about her microbiome and the caffeine. It, yeah, it's not ideal. So the funny thing is that the worst my digestion has ever been was eating Freely's 30 bananas a day, eating that much fruit. Her whole thing was at least 2,500 calories a day and eating that much, so much of it coming from bananas. My stomach was constantly making sounds. I've talked about this before, but this was one of the main reasons I stopped doing that. Not only the weight gain, but also just, and my blood pressure was up too. My blood pressure is usually 110 over 70. It actually got to 120 over 80, which is now considered pre-hypertension. My stomach was just constantly making noises. I remember being in the movie theater and like praying that when there was a quiet part, my stomach wouldn't go like, like this inside fart thing. <laughs> It's fucking gross and it was constantly doing that. So yeah, the worst my digestion has ever been following her guidelines. Next level burger, which is a chain. What? They have a okay. few locations, I think. One of them here in Portland. We eat there a lot. And wow. yeah, toddler just asked like early in the day, like burger. So she says she eats there a lot. So eating out, so eating out a lot. She always says, oh, you know, raw is too expensive and stuff like that. But if you're eating out a lot, she did just say that, right? That adds up. Yes, that adds up. But you also get yummy, delicious food that's been prepared for you. <laughs> I've talked about this before as well. Like, I am willing to spend more on food when it's yummy, special vegan, vegan stuff. I'm supporting vegan companies. I'm not willing to spend $1,000 a month on tomatoes and bananas and papaya and pineapple. Like it's just, it's just horrible. And this was the main reason I stopped eating raw. I didn't feel like terrible or anything like that. Um, I'd been doing it for, I think like three years at that point, something like that. For me, it was the cost. I was spending so much money and whenever I would try to save more, it meant not being able to eat all the fruits that I actually liked, like papaya and pineapple and whatnot. I would have to just mostly eat bananas and some dates and limit tomatoes, which I freaking loved. And it was just shitty. And I just felt like really bad spending all this money on food just for myself. Like, I'm not kidding. There were months I spent a thousand dollars on fruits and vegetables just for me. But yeah, when I say a lot, we don't eat next level burger a lot. We actually haven't had next level burger in quite a while. We usually get this place called, called Yansu. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but it's an all vegan Chinese place here um, that has like more vegetables and whatnot. And I don't eat it because I've been off of it for a while, <laughs> but the kids and partner really, really like it. Lots of mock meats and broccoli and baby corn. Oh, 
evil devil food. Also, this was back in August, we started eating more out here in Portland with COVID, trying to really support the vegan restaurants here because we don't want places to close. For a while, like we were getting food like every single week, we're getting Next Level Burger or Yonsu, DC Vegetarian. This is definitely like one of my worse, I would guess, what I ate today. So it was a good day. It was a uh, kind of weird day of eating. I wasn't planning on getting um, takeout or anything, but that was very yummy. And I don't know what I'm gonna have. I'm still not hungry at all. So I might have a little snack or something. You know, she said this is the one that popped up. I have no reason like not to not to believe her there, which is why when I watch what I ate today's, if they're like weird or something, I make sure to watch several of them before criticizing. I don't want to criticize someone's weird day. And this is like never something I would criticize for someone if they're talking about being woken up early. It's the people like Freely who are saying this is healthy and like they're regularly eating just potatoes for a meal. I'm not saying Freely's doing that, but you know what I'm talking about when they're not eating very much protein and they're like, this is so healthy and yeah just drink you know an entire blender full of orange juice no that's fine it's like yeah that's the stuff I'm gonna criticize because that's that's not good and that's not good to promote to people right but I'm not gonna criticize someone for having low energy because they have a two-year-old or really closer to one and a half year old then who's having trouble sleeping and they need caffeine to get through the day I mean that's freely you're better than that. No one's saying this is healthy. It's a fun meal that you get out to eat. The channels that concern me are the ones that are eating tons and tons of fruits and vegetables because people don't know any better. They look at that and they go, oh, it's so healthy. Yeah, but they're getting like no calcium. They're, they're not any eating hardly any cooked greens. They aren't consuming any fortified vegan beverage. So they're getting hardly any calcium. That's not healthy. It may look healthy because they're eating lots of fruits and vegetables, but it's actually not. If you aren't meeting your nutrient needs, it's not healthy. And that's essentially what Freely is promoting. Wow, the child is being fed a terrible diet here. And yes, it's better that it's plant-based, but still just so, so fried. Yes, our kids have French fries and burgers sometimes. Yes, Freely, we don't, we don't limit them to just healthy foods all the time. I think it's okay to have unhealthy foods sometimes, you know, pretty much every day, pretty much every day. If they eat their dinner, if they eat their vegetables, they get to have some gummies or some ice cream or cookies or whatever it is that we have after dinner. They're doing pretty well. <laughs> the doctor's always impressed. They're always impressed with their iron, <laughs> which is super funny. And certainly with their verbal skills, especially a uh, toddler. Yeah. So I think we're doing all right. I don't know where I come from. If you order a sandwich type thing and you don't Okay, anyway, so we don't need to hear all these extra details that she seems to want to give a lot. She's an interesting character, isn't she? She's a fascinating character, this one. Um, maybe she'll talk more about food. Maybe she'll talk more about food. Really, I think that says a lot more about you than it does about me. <laughs> You're only interested in hearing about food. That's a little weird. But yeah, it's pretty typical for what I ate today is to venture off into other things because... You know, most of us have other things going on in our lives. You know, we don't just eat and pick fruit all day. Oh, see, I can do it too. I can be passive aggressive. <laughs> Seriously, like, you know, that's that's typical for vloggy type stuff. I just kind of talk about whatever. I don't think most of the people who watch me want to just hear, here's what I ate and here's another thing I ate. Like, I think you guys kind of want to hear about other stuff that's going on, maybe. And if not, then you're probably not even watching this video. And you know what? That's all right. Channel's not for everyone. Just like Freely's not for everyone. Right? It sounds like she's talking about dessert here, that she got dessert, cookies and cream, um, some, something sweet, right? Because she's not getting enough sweet fruit in her day. She used to when she was raw. I mean, she ended up eating, under eating, but she did actually eat. Um, thank me in a video for helping her eat enough on Raw. I thanked her for helping me get out of my obsession with weight and whatnot, which I think is just one of the, if not the only positive thing <laughs> about eating 30 bananas a day was that the focus was not on weight gain. In fact, it was expected for you to gain weight. It worked out for me because I was able to lose the weight, but obviously a lot of people have really struggled and have not had that result. But for me, it helped me to just focus on, okay, I get these amount of cal this amount of calories a day 
and that's it. And so I really did just stop focusing on losing weight. For those who don't know, I was bulimic. I was really not doing well at all and struggling mentally, all that sort of stuff, obsessed with weight. And to be clear, I started 30 bananas a day with the intention of ultimately being you know, super slim, like freely, right? So it's not like I was just totally like, I don't care about weight anymore. But I thought that the way to get there was to just not care anymore and to um, just focus on calories. And then I would gain weight and then magically the weight would just come off because I don't know, that's what she said would happen. <laughs> metabolic damage, something like that. So I did that for a while. I want to say a year and a half. I could be wrong. And then, like I said, eventually got sick of the weight that clearly was not coming off. It just kept creeping up and up and up and the digestion and then my blood pressure that really concerned me. So then I actually reached out to another raw foodist. I can't remember his name. I don't know if he's still around or not. Um, and he suggested eating more vegetables and particularly trying to eat more um, like sodium rich vegetables, like celery and the weight dropped off within like, I think three months, I'd lost all the weight that I put on and was feeling so much better. And I wasn't so hungry for savory stuff all the time. That was another horrible thing. Eating her way was just it's so much sweet all the time. I just wanted tomatoes all the fucking time. Again, the one positive that came out of that, I think having that time, that span of months where I really was not thinking, I was not focused on weight, I think really did help me mentally. So thank you for that, Freely. I don't think that absolves you of all of the damage that you've helped cause that you've done to other women with your advice um, and certainly slandering other women who have come out and said that, wow, this has been really bad for me, raw till 4, 30 bananas a day, whatever you want to call it. For me, it seemed to be at least somewhat positive. The world doesn't revolve around me though. And again, for a lot of other women and men, um, your diet has not been a positive experience. She's not meeting her basic physiological needs. She's not getting enough fructose, not getting enough glucose in general. In general, She's just getting a lot of processed, fatty, high protein, liver, kidney straining foods. Liver, kidney straining foods. Yeah, that's a myth, protein and kidneys. Obviously, if you're eating a lot of animal protein, that's going to have consequences or it could have consequences. Sure, certainly, there's certain correlations there, but if you are eating lots of plant protein, there is no indication that that's going to be hard on your kidneys. Even animal protein, animal protein kidney link for people with healthy kidneys it doesn't exist it's been debunked the tiny baby seems to be just eating the same junk food diet as her which is quite upsetting freely no i'm always very careful about criticizing how parents feed their kids i've done it before but i'm very careful again to go by lots of different what i ate today it's because i am very concerned about some of these vegan families who are showing very inadequate diets for their kids. Again, it may work for their kids, but not all kids are going to be a going to be able to eat that amount of fruits and vegetables. But I would never just watch what I ate, one what I ate today from someone and go, wow, that's very irresponsible feeding your kid. It's like, no, if I see someone who is constantly feeding their kid rice and ketchup, yes, that was a real thing. And over and over again, they're just eating vegetables and very little protein then yeah, I think that's worth discussing when there's someone who has a large following, all the comments on the videos are just positive, talking about how healthy the kid eats. That suggests to me that, wow, there's a lot of misinformation going on here. And I really worry that people are going to be influenced and they're going to try to feed their kids this way. Again, I would just never watch uh, one what I ate today from someone and go, wow, you fed your kids <laughs> a vegan burger and fries. That's so irresponsible. And some gluten-free nut chips that is irresponsible freely that is very irresponsible and again certain people watching you're going to make them feel so bad particularly parents it's really hard for a lot of parents who are constantly being criticized or feel like they're being criticized especially today like just everything you do is is wrong and there are all these rules some of them are absolutely ridiculous but maybe that's another video for another day a lot of women would see something like this and just feel really fucking bad and feel really worried for their child's health because they gave them some fries and a burger. What? Okay, then she had vegan chocolate chip, choc chip cookie dough, but you can't have fruit. But no one's saying cookie dough bites are healthier than fruit. No, fruit is a health food. It's just, you, you can't eat too much of it. You know, you can crowd out other important foods that are high in other nutrients that fruit isn't high in. Exercise was just two walks and a little bit of some uh, core stability stuff because my back has been 
it's just extremely bad. I can't do like anything without pain anymore. Okay, so she she can't she basically can't do anything without having pain. All right, so she could have injured herself. Yes, I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but I wouldn't be having coffee because that has definitely been that's definitely considered as like a, a pro-inflammatory. Okay, so again, my back's been better now. I think I started to fix it, quote unquote, soon after that. I've had like a few instances where it's like, oh, I can't do that still. Um, I was trying to do some more faster power-based kind of movements and that seemed to, no, can't, can't do that. But uh, yeah, my back has been the best it has been in literally years. And uh, yeah, still drinking coffee two times a day. So I don't think it's the coffee. So yeah, just more of the same. We're, we're frugivores. We got to eat a fru frugivore diet. She's so surprised that my diet is, is this bad. And again, I just can't imagine watching a video like this from someone where they're woken up very early by their baby. They obviously have chronic back pain. They can't, you know, do much of anything without back pain. And I'm criticizing them for drinking coffee, having a burger and fries like that, you know, freely take a step back try to have a little bit more compassion and be a little bit more sympathetic um because i know i'm i'm smiling a lot in that video ah fuck my back pain was uh pretty bad god damn it this is why i haven't done this fucking video <laughs> this is why i haven't talked about my back pain because um I didn't realize how bad it was because I'd been dealing with it for so many years and it had been constant for so long. I don't even know how long at this point. You just don't realize how bad it is until it's gone. And then I remember I did something, I sat all day or, or something and I had some pain again. This was like a couple months or so after relief. And I was just like, I can't believe this. Like, <laughs> this is amazing way it's going to come back. Like what's happening? And, um, I had to go to the store to get some food, do our weekly grocery shopping. And I remember sitting in the car and just like, God, this hurts so bad. Is this what it was like all the time? And I just started crying. It just made me so sad realizing that, man, I'd been struggling that badly. I'm not doing this to like try to get sympathy or anything. It's just, um, it hasn't been that long since I dealt with this and it's still really shocking to me. Um, again, I had some back pain just recently trying to do like, I can do power moves now. Oh fuck. No, I can't. And it went away. Like it goes away so quick now. It doesn't last like it used to, but even still like just those little instances, it's like, fuck man, I felt like that all the time, all the time. And sometimes it would get worse, but it never got better to the point where it's like, oh, my back doesn't hurt. There was always at least like low grade pain. Just having these few months of not having that. It's like, man, maybe that's why I had this particular problem. I don't want to get into too much detail, but also just with energy and whatnot and irritability. It's like, you don't realize how much that affects you. I, I think at least for me until, um, until it's gone. I think this is just another area that Freely doesn't really have a lot of experience in. So again, I just can't imagine hearing that from someone and going like, wow, I'm going to criticize their diet for this day when they've been struggling with chronic pain all day. So that's it. Again, pretty low hanging fruit. I know a lot of you guys don't agree with Freely. Most people do not agree with Freely. She's not coming from a place of science. She's not even trying to seemingly. I hope she realizes that she is better than this. She can be better than this. So many people would want her to be better than this and would support her and would flock to her if she would stop doing this sort of fake I'm trying to help you sort of thing. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. My battery's dying. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe, support the channel, patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I really don't want to end the video like this, but my battery is literally dying. Um, you know, fruit is great and it's healthy and eat it, but make sure you're eating other foods too. You know, it's pretty standard nutrition advice. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll have a new video very soon, hopefully. And it's happy tears. Like I've really, you know, it's amazing. I'm so happy I'm doing better and I need to do that video. I'll try to do it. <laughs> I really don't want to cry through the whole thing. I really try to do it. Um, cause maybe it'll help some of you cause chronic back pain is one of the most common, common things. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks again. New video soon.